nation it is sunday march 10th and you're watching the loose cannons podcast the day before free agencies at least legal tempering uh tampering period begins and uh, what what the poppy fucking latte is back in the fucking house in the building in the flesh in the brown welcome back latte i'm glad you you are still part of this team man it was good to be back. It feels good to be back. It was no secret. I wanted to be a candidate for life. Uh, I had to get some business out of the way there, some negotiating, you know, and sometimes negotiating gets, you know, it gets tricky. But, you know, you say things as part of a negotiation that you truly know you don't mean. Home is where the heart is. Samer and company and Stank wanted me back. I wanted to be here. And we were able to come to terms on a fair deal on both sides. Quite frankly, kind of like what happened today. Samer, if you want to elaborate, please. Baker oh, yeah. fucking Mayfield. Hey, we're baking again? Yeah, listen, the Bucks and Baker Mayfield have officially agreed on a, a re-signed contract. He's coming back. He's going to be with the Bucks for what le- looks like a three-year deal worth $100 million. Could be worth $115 million. Technically, could be a two-year deal. Could be a four-year deal. The Bucks structured it, obviously, the way Jason structures it. We'll get into that in a second, but Latte... Did we ever have a doubt that Jason Light and Greenberg and Spytech and the entire front office was going to figure this out and make sure that Baker didn't leave this building, didn't see the light of free agency, and not only that, didn't even have to use a franchise tag on him. Kept him at a reasonable price, in my opinion. Let's the let's the Bucks continue doing what they're doing. Let's them keep building. Doesn't lock them up in case things go terribly wrong. I mean, this is this is a momentous occasion to end a week that started with Mike fucking Evans signing with the Bucks. You weren't here to celebrate with us, but oh my God, what a mm. week from Monday to Sunday! Just a complete, just wow. The Bucks nailed it, dude. All is well. I mean, literally, just just domino after domino. Bing, Winfield, tag. Gonna as a placeholder, they're gonna figure it out. Two days later, there's a boom. Mike fucking Evans, Buck for life. Forty eight hours later, boom. It's like. They're just knocking them. They're just setting them up, knocking them right down. By the way, it's 50 years guaranteed, 50 million guaranteed, not 50 years guaranteed. Whoa. Holy what? shit. That's oh, a million that's a year. <laughs> Holy shit. That'd be a bargain. That'd be a bargain. Yeah. But no, it's, you look at the, and Samer knows this, we all know this. You look at the guarantee, right? Everybody gets caught up in the three years, 100 million, 115 with incentives and stuff. And they look at it like 33 year. It's essentially $50 million guaranteed. So it's two years, 50 mil guaranteed. After that, we can get out of this deal after year one if we want to. If we, you know, no, if we want after year two, after year two, but if with, with some negative capital, is what I'm saying, we can get rid of it, you know, get out from under it next year. I, it's a great deal on both sides. Uh, and the 50 is actually really 40, dude. I don't know if you saw, but Scott Reynolds posted it. It's a $10 million uh, guarantee against injury. So he only gets that 10 if he gets injured. He, well, he will get, you know what I mean? It's an insanely good deal on both sides. I see some people out there bitching. I don't know why. Quite frankly, I'm a little confused. Uh, Baker's not a top three, top five quarterback, but he is absolutely an above average to good to sometimes great has peaks and valleys sometimes, but shit, we were one game away from the NFC championship guys. And we pushed Detroit to the brink. That's because of Baker and, and the, t- the pieces around him. So I'm extremely happy. And to those that aren't, I pose the question, what was the alternative? And, and I don't want to hear Trask. Or I'm going to fucking flip my camera. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I don't want to hear Trask. No. I don't want to hear Kirk Cousins, the guy who's never won a single meaningful moment in, uh, in football. And I don't want to hear and I don't want to hear don't want to hear about Russ. Okay. Russ is not Russ without a certain structure around him, a certain setup of a team. And uh, you know, he's had his moments, don't get me wrong, but they worked with Seattle because of what they had around him and the way he bought into it. Once he started buying out of it, what happened? It became about Russ. And I don't think he's that good anymore. And I'm not interested in bringing in a guy like that, taking a step back. What they did last year with Baker, Latte, they, they had no choice. You can't sign a free agent to a prove-it deal, have him prove it to you, 
and then let him leave the building. It doesn't look good for you as an organization within, but it also doesn't look good for you outside looking into the other free agents who might want to be, you know, guys you go to, hey, we need you to sign for one year, prove it deal. We're going to reward you. He's like, you didn't just, you just literally didn't do that right now. I mean, what are you talking about? So it, it's, it's, it's a catch 22. They have to reward the guys that, that they take their, you know, their, their chances on. And then those guys reward them. The loyalty goes both ways. So they had to do this with Baker and what you just talked about. What they were able to build, you can't build that. You can't bring back Mike. You can't, you know, look to re-sign Tristan Wirfs and do all the stuff that you're doing and continue building forward and then take a step backwards with the quarterback. Unless it's an absolute get us the heck out of here, we don't want him here kind of deal, you have to continue to build with the same pieces. And if it, you know, they like you, you talked about, I don't want to touch on this yet, but kind of because it's like the next topic, but the way they structured it is in a way where the Bucks are out of this scot clean after two years if they really want to be. And it allows him... They signed him for $33 million, essentially, a year. And the franchise tag would have been $38.3 million. But he has the ability with incentives to match $38.3 million at the end of it all. So it's like they're playing 5D chess. Like I tweeted, they're playing 5D chess with lasers at this point. It's not even close. And it's like it's such a good deal. It's smart. And it lets them continue to build. And if things go bad, they have the ability to jump ship and restart. And that's kind of lined up perfectly with what the Mike Evans two-year deal. If at the end of those two years they like, listen, it's not oh. worked out. Baker's Brain not in. Matches, right? yeah. It's like, sorry, Mike. If you want to keep playing, it's probably not going to be here. And if it works out, then they attach him again for another year or two, or however they want. They have the ability to go both ways. They have perfect I, pivot position. They have perfect pivot position. But uh, hold on, hold, pump the fucking brakes, bro. I, th- I think thirteen made it pretty clear. <laughs> He said he don't care who's playing quarterback, even though he agrees that Baker's elite, and that's a whole other subject that I'm not I'm not climbing down that. I'm not doing that. But he's going to be here for life. That, that, this is where he wants to be. He, he said himself, he entertained the idea. It would be cool. I got friends around the league. Pump the fucking brakes there, bro. They may ask Mike, hey, Mike, after two years, like, it didn't work. Do, do you want to go somewhere and ring chase? Cool. He said. Not, well, he well, said, I think I could play five or six more years, and I, I want to play. Yeah. So they hard. signed him to a two-year deal. So at the end yeah. of those two years, if they're like – this did not work. We have to pivot. We have to rebuild. We have to draft a rookie quarterback. Yeah, Mike has the, the one-year contracts. Mike like has the ability to pivot or stay and continue to build with them. But now that's what I'm saying. They have the perfect ability to pivot and build, and they can draft a wide receiver. They can draft a quarterback. It, it, like they have, like the like Jason Light has done since, uh, as far as I remember, at least after the Lovey Smith years, he's put himself in a position to go any sort of direction when necessary. He's never cornered. He's never pigeonholed. He's able to to kind of mold and beat amoeba in free agency and amoeba in in in, in uh, the draft to where they can do what they need to do and that's that's what makes it so damn good watching them do what they do man every offseason people freak the fuck out and you myself just you and me actually jc my guy on fully loaded but not lot not stank he's always worried we just kind of sit back we're like we have nothing to worry about we got to trust hey. these guys Damn, can you do me a favor? Uh, while I talk about this, can you bring up the link, please, and put in the chat, pin it to the Arians GoFundMe Foundation for the concert this year, please? A Pelagic Computer just entered the room. So did B-Shuck. Two Hall of Famers as it relates to this podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, B- B-Shuck says, damn, now I'm late to the party again, even though, you know, we're usually the ones that are late because it's 730-ish. You know that. Um, and then Pelagic says, how can people be pissed about this deal? Because I'm convinced, Pelagic, that... Some people just want to be pissed. Some people just want to see the world burn. But I pointed you two out as Sam is going to post, post this link in the chat because I want to raise briefly, guys. We're raising money again for the Bruce Arians Family Foundation. Um, it is a concert this year. The golf tournament will be later, but it is a concert with Jason Aldean, others, uh, possibly some appearances from Jaden. I don't know yet, not confirmed. Um, and if you know anything, and I brought up Pelagic, I brought, I brought up Bishuk. If you know anything about Arians parties, they know how to party. You want to talk about getting nuggets or getting or just having a beer with, you know, with 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 uh, with Bruce Arians or Jason Light. I heard two years ago at this gala that, you know, from a very, you know, good source. Take that for whatever you want that Russ was done two years ago. Like, nope, we're not trading for him. I remember Sam was on that on that on that hill big time. Like, we should go get him. And this balloon was popped like mine was popped at the gala, too, about taking a running back in the first round. Jason was like, not going to happen. I'm glad you like him, but not going to happen, sir. Not happening. Uh, Sammer's bubble was burst with Russell it's for those that want Russ. We were told by a very good source he was done two years ago. What made him special was his ability to do things outside of structure, and he doesn't have that gear anymore. So if you want to go rub shoulders with the elite of the elite, with players you don't ever know who's going to show up, Mike Evans is showing up, Rashad White, JPP, Bruce, etc., 
it's a raffle ticket. 10 bucks gets you a raffle for a $250 ticket that gets you in the building for the private concert. It's only like 1,200 people, guys. You can probably get a little bit of sweat on you of Jason Aldean if you're, if you're into that kind of stuff, if you're into country music. Uh, and it gets you two drinks as well out there. The $20 raffle is for the $1,000. That's the pre-party, all you can drink, all you can eat, mm-hmm. with the elite of the elite, mm-hmm. Ronde Barber, all those guys. Then the concert with two drink tickets, then the after party. What's an after party like, Sam, with the Aryans? Listen, it's not an after party with a bunch of people. This is an after party with, like, celebrity guests, okay? But also the Aryans and the friends of the Aryans, people like Chuck Pagano, okay? You're going to be sitting there in a football conversation with drinks, and you're not going to know what's going on around you. You're going to think you're on Showtime with the fucking NFL guys, right? And they're all just talking ball, and they're talking about important stuff, and you're going to be privy to it. You're going to be able to hang out with that. You're going to be able to... Make comments. I mean, dude, it's it's unreal. It's surreal. And to be able to donate $20 for a chance at a raffle ticket that gets you into that $1,000 type of, uh, you know, entry, that that's crazy. So the, the, the VIP pre and post party, by far, by far the coolest part of the raffle that we're doing and the event. But again, at the end of the day, what they do, the Arians Family Foundation, the stuff they do with Voices for Kids in Tampa or Voices for Children – and the CASA and all that kind of stuff that they bring together and help these kids who don't have people representing for them, don't have voices. That's what matters. So you're donating to that great cause. We find that cause to be dear to our hearts. That's why we've raised money for them for three straight seasons now. We're going to continue doing that, obviously. So the more you guys can help us hit that goal, the better it is for everybody involved. And you guys know us. We, we always kick back to you guys when you guys help us hit these goals with these um, fundraisers. So I, it's a win-win, honestly. 10 bucks or 20 bucks, you're right winning. I'm going to say it right now, Sam. I'm going to say it right now, bro. Uh, it's 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Even if you're not interested in the country concert, it, it's going for kids. It all. I don't even know who Jason Aldean is. 100%. I can't stand it. Goes for the foundation for kids. But I, I, I'll say it right now. Whoever the two winners are, we're going to do a separate thing for the golf tournament. And B Shuck's done this. Zach has done this. Uh, Pelagic's done this. Uh, Leprechaun's done this because of their raffles and stuff uh, or their participation with, with, with the raffles and stuff. Whoever wins these two, automatic ticket to the golf tournament with us you get the party with us with the players if you've seen our videos you know it's a fucking yeah, party pretty cool yeah. uh I, i'm yeah i'm just pulling i'm pulling a, an audible here whoever wins these two gets to hang out with us at the golf tournament and yeah it's insane that's where uh samer got his hood signed by ronte barber and bruce arians uh, my yeah. kid played catch with mike evans like that's pretty stupid shit back I've made, hey, I made some badass connections on that golf course with that sponsored hole, man. That's some cool shit. But, yes, Latte, back to what I'm talking about. The Bucks basically got Baker for nothing. At the end of the day, they got him for, everyone's complaining about the market value you're repairing. Listen, that Geno Smith deal happened two years ago. The money is much different now. The cap went up $30 million a couple weeks ago, maybe, three, I think, three weeks ago. Like, things go up. Milk didn't cost the same three, four, you know, five years ago, right? So, quarterbacks don't cost the same whether they're mid-tier upper or what you know you'd call it the elite who i think there's only three in the entire nfl and yes baker is not an elite quarterback but at the end of the day i don't imagine that mike evans signed and they said hey who do you want to be your quarterback and he said oh i'd like kirk cousins who i've never played with or hey yeah i'd like to see russell wilson down here who i've never played with he said baker and they said, okay, we're going to make sure that happens. And Baker said, I'm coming back if Mike is here. He w- Mike, B- Baker's not stupid. He knows Mike makes his job easier. And Mike knows that Baker allows him to do his thing because he's going to throw him the ball. So at the end of the day, it's a mutual thing. And the Bucks want them both back. They both want to be back. It just works out. And they, they did it in a way that makes a lot of sense like I was talking about. All you got to do, I, I love when we get into the, into these debates on Twitter and here, and we love all of you. Everybody has their opinion, and that's why we do this stupid show because we're we're fanatics. We're we're addicts to this stupid shit, and it's amazing, right? Amazing community. But at the end of the day, listen, folks, listen. It doesn't fucking matter what we think. No, not me, not Samer, not Stanks barefoot ass, not you guys in the chat. Look at the reaction of his teammates. Look at Worf's reaction on Twitter. Look at Mike's reaction. Look at Rashad's reaction. I think somebody said it in the offseason that he's an igniter. He came into that room and, like we like to say, put his dick on the table and said, yeah, I'm following Tom. I'm not Tom. I'm going to do it my way, and let's fucking go, guys. He, like, It doesn't matter whether you like him or not. The guys that you guys love that are beloved, and Mike and Levante, Worfs, who's goddamn a Hall of Famer already, they all love him. That's the beginning and the end. That's where it starts and it finishes. Nothing we think matters. They want to play with him. They want to go through, run through a wall with him. 
I was watching some highlights with my son, Samer of, of Baker, the, the first game, Minnesota, where <laughs> get your weight up, little last boy. And then the, the fourth quarter, we put his shoulder down and got freaking lassoed by his neck, bro. And the sideline went absolutely insane. Those guys want to play with him. They want to run through a wall with him. There's nothing that we can do to change that. So I'm, yeah. I'm for one, I'm glad that, that he's here. I'd, I'd hate to have Russell, like the Denver guys, and you got guys in there chirping and leaking shit that they're they're rolling their eyes like this guy's cringe as fuck we hate this guy dude it's you've seen the point. pictures he's on the sideline like not even uh, he's oblivious to what's going on and what he's doing to hurt the team the team sucks and the defensive players are looking at him like you piece of shit like they do not like that guy and so like you said what matters is what these guys think about him and they they saw baker in person they saw that baker is a gamer and he's a warrior and he's gonna go die for them and so it's hard for them to say, I don't want to play with that guy. Because at the end of the day, there's tons of guys who've had tons of talent, but they don't want to die for their teammates. And then, you know, those guys don't want those dudes in the locker room. Baker's loved in this locker room. He made it his locker room. He became the leader. Tristan Wirfs, his left tackle, was, could have been his right tackle. Could be probably any, any position on his line, honestly. They're best friends. Like, they are legitimately best friends. So... That stuff all culminates in the culture that they're building, the camaraderie that they're building. And, like, we, you know, the sad thing, uh, you know, when you see a team like the a couple years ago when we lost to the Rams, you say at the end of the season, this team is never going to be together again. We're never going to see this collection of guys because I think this collection of guys was special. Last year, we lost in Detroit. And that collection of guys, I, saw, I thought, they went through a losing streak. Then they bounced back and went on a winning streak. They've had each other's backs. They didn't fall apart. They fought for their head coach. And now this collection of guys, they have something there. There's that, that culture of not giving up. Oh, and close. Yeah, Oof. that heart that you get in that culture is something you can't let go. You can't just let that walk out the building. I'm not saying it's one person or two guys, but it's a collective. And keeping as many of those pieces together and keeping that culture together and building off of that is massive. And that's what got into all this. That collection of guys – the majority of them are going to be back. The ones that won't be back are the ones that didn't help the team. Guys like Ryan Neal, guys like Devin White, <laughs> things like, you know, guys of that nature. Not to say Shaq Barrett didn't help the team, but now you're getting younger. He might still Shaq be might, back on I, top Shaq, of that. Shaq might be back. On, yeah, on so, so that collection of guys, that's a big deal. That's that's the biggest thing for me. And I think they understood that. Hey, we had something in that. Let's continue it again. Let's see what we can do now. Let's see if we can get them to grow up a little bit more as a group. Let's improve the trenches. Let's improve some pass rush. And, man, this team could be dangerous, man. I woke up feeling a little dangerous today. Interesting. God damn it, it feels good to be back, Sam. Or holy shit, bro. What's it been, a month and a half? Hey, listen. Like, okay, it isn't out for the week. But listen, real quick. Rendax says, talk about the culture that Light has built. Players want to stay here. Long gone are the days of settling for players like Chris Baker, a vastly under, understated factor of the organization that has uh, has sold. And then he said again here, uh, Set when you were talking about the salary, he goes, wait, wait till, wait till Dak resigns for fifty plus million dollars, like a year. Then people are gonna be real quiet as far as the thirty three that Baker's getting. That's not really even thirty guaranteed. And then we got a couple of super chats. Sorry, Sam, I'm just doing some of the laundry what, here. Do you think? Some of the stuff, stuff we got to do. Keen James eight one three with a nineteen ninety nine super chat said, "This is a solid deal, as is the Mike deal. When will the haters of this deal learn to trust Light and the rest of the front office? I don't know, Keen James. I'm tired." I'm tired of saying let light cook. I'm tired of saying follow the light. I'm tired of saying trust the light. I, I don't know. I don't know when people are going to learn. I don't know. Uh, Samer and I got into a heated debate, heated debate at the beginning of this podcast. It's a famous episode, spicy chicken breast. I was wanting to go get Tom Brady and Samer, I get his point, wanted to com remain competitive. He's like, if you go all in, you don't get it. Then we're going to, you know, we might, so it could happen. We might suck for years because you're going all in with an aging old quarterback. And my thing was, if you can get the goat, go get the fucking goat. Samer's point was, I want to be competitive every year. We're here, guys. Yeah. Like, the roster that they have built is, in, is, is fucking stupid. And what do you think happens when that happens? When, you, when your front office starts nailing draft picks, starts bringing in the correct free agents, building a culture, you have to pay those guys. I was talking to Pelagic on, on the way here to the studio. I was talking to Pelagic, and it's like, what happens next year if Yaya goes out and gets 15 sacks, Samer? You got, you got to get ready to pay him up. Pay him up. Pay him in a year. In another year, you're gonna have to pay him. It's just. I mean, in that case, they still have. Walk? They still have. They still have another year with him after that. Yeah. But yeah, they yeah. know they're gonna have to. If he does it again, which he's going to, because he'd be hungry at that point. He's proving himself. There's no reason not to do it unless there's an injury or something of that nature. But if he continues and his talent is there, he will do it again. And then you got to pay him. And so, what's unprecedented about this latte is that this team won. Okay, after going all in free agency wise. 
you know, basically making a deal with the devil, which they, they say that in the NFL, because once you make that deal, if you do not make it happen, you are screwed on the opposite side of that deal. They did that. They came out from the other side. They, they bit a massive chunk of that credit card bill last season, and they continue to win. They continue to draft well. They continue to bring in free agencies that don't cost a lot, know their role, and contribute, and help build more. Like, that's not normal. This is unprecedented, especially in the NFL. But now let's look at it microcosm. As a Bucks fan, this is unheard of. We are competitive. We're drafting guys. We're bringing in guys, and we're winning, and we're doing it after we won the Super Bowl as opposed to falling completely apart. Look at the Rams. Look how many years it took them to figure it out. And they're still technically screwed a little bit, but they've gotten lucky with the guys like Puka and some of the other guys that they drafted, the defensive uh, uh, player that I think was defensive player of the year, almost defensive player of the year. So they've got the guys too, but what the Bucks are doing, unprecedented. And to not understand that not to be happy about it, Let's just you know say, this, worst case scenario, Baker flames out. In two years, guess what? We're still set up. We're still set We're up. Fine. We're still fine. <laughs> uh, I, I think what it is, Samer, is, and look, we've all been Bucks fans for a long time, right? We all have a certain amount of PTSD. We were all draft experts. I, I, I you know, admittedly won as well, and I loved it. And I, I remember having to unwash my brain of that where it's like, oh, fuck it. Let's just not win the division. Who cares? We're going to get no. killed anyways. Let's go get a better draft pick because that's the way I was conditioned. It's okay. I get it. I guess people are just conditioned. Like, I don't want negative cap years. We've always had great cap. And it's like, guys, because we had shitty players and we didn't have to resign them. <laughs> when you get good guys and you draft well, this is what happens. The difference is when you do it in a responsible way, unlike the Saints, mm. who they just maxed out their credit card. They're, they're, just, they're just waiting on their income tax check just to blow it. They're just dumb with their money. We're not that. We're not that. I got to get another super chat in. This one, this one, I mean, glorifying Samer. We all love the ones that, you know, glorify Samer. Samer loves those too. Pelagian Computer, $10 super chat. Thank you, brother. It says Samer's spot on with the inflation piece. Even with that, Baker's guarantee is nearly identical to Geno's, $40 million. If you are pissed about this deal, eat an eggplant emoji. Ooh, wow. Eat an, an, dick. Italian, eat an Italian, Italian dick, basically. Dick. Yep, yeah. In dick, Italian dick. No, dude. So, like, you're talking about the, the salary cap. The teams that have a lot of cap space are what, Latte? <laughs> the really shitty teams. The Chicago <laughs> Bears, okay? The Jaguars of a couple of years ago. Like, if you have a lot of cap space, it means you don't have good players to give the money to. Then you're like, ah, oh, I guess we don't have anyone to pay because they all fucking suck. It's very rare that you have good cap, like, a lot of cap space and you're a good team. Uh, the Chiefs kind of in the middle of it, like the Bucks. They're in the middle. You got to be in that little, that like gray zone because you got good players. You're winning. You're not, you know, competing for the top draft spots. So you're not really killing your cap on that side of things either because you do got to pay those guys more. But you're in that middle area. And that's where the Bucks are right now, which is a good place to be. I know people say, oh, this is mediocrity. But the Bucks don't have not, Jason Light doesn't build it that way. Worst case scenario, let's say Baker flames out in a couple of years. There's nothing that says they won't draft a quarterback this year, right? That, still Latte, L- Latte, Light always hedges his bets. If he signs a left guard, he also drafts a left guard. If he signs a safety, he also drafts a safety. And if you win the job as a free agent or not, he he lets it play out that way. And then I think to somebody honest, mentioned it. Go ahead. To be honest, I'm not shocked that we draft the quarterback this year. I wouldn't be I shocked think, either. Tra- Why Trask not? Is, Trask is in the last year of his contract this year. Uh Clearly, they. I'm not saying they don't believe in the kid, but they've seen what they, they've seen enough, right? <laughs> if he was the guy, they wouldn't have paid Baker what they paid him. They would have. No, I brought Baker in last year. Well, they had to bring competition in last year, but it is what it is. My point is, it's good process. Go draft the fucking quarterback. Go draft one, and, and if you get a good steal at the end of the first, maybe not, because then you kind of pressure the first round quarterback to play him, and you kind of, you know, the tea leaves to Baker. Like we're gonna move on. But go draft one in the second, third round. You you don't know. If Michael Penix is that. Whatever. The point is. We'll be fine. Here, here's the thing, man. Like, those big free agent signings, year in, year out, how many of them actually pan out? They it's don't. Very, I got, it, that's an argument with my boy is a Falcons fan. They went out and spent all their cap. They had, like, over $120 million in cap, and he's like, oh, we're going to be great. And I'm like, guys, I've seen this I've seen this movie before. We've done this before. Yeah. As fans. You go get a bunch of hired guns, and it never, it just never works. It doesn't work. Remember the all-star dream team that they built in Philadelphia? That didn't work. Then they had a corner in Philadelphia who, who was a stud, and the Raiders, I believe, paid him crazy amount of money. Never played well again. Anytime you have these massive signings, they don't work. The signings that do work, the middle-tier ones, the ones where it's like, come out here, prove you're not a fluke, or we saw what you did as a role player. We think you can grow into a bigger guy, a Shaq Barrett, for instance. 
Those are the deals that matter. The role players, the guys that you bring in to be the, you know, the spot up three point shooters for lack of a better analogy. Those are the ones that matter. The ones that are massive, go get the guy, go sign the best defensive back, go sign the best edge rusher. They usually do not pan out and the bucks stay away from that. The Tom Brady one, the biggest one, honestly, and that one did pan out, but this team was fucking loaded when they brought him in. This wasn't, the Jaguars going out and get Tom Brady and hoping he just makes everything fucking work. So it's better to re-sign your guys. You're keeping them in the system that you know they're, they they work well in. They know what they work well in. They're not coming into a new environment. You don't know if they're going to be distracted by Tampa Bay and all the stuff that's on Dale Mabry and all the things that they can get into, being in Florida, being able to go to Miami what's, anytime what's on you want. Uh, what's on what's on Dumbabry? I'm just saying, you know, you could go to Miami at any moment if you live in Tampa. It's, if you got money, you hop on a plane, you're there in a little Miami. bit of like 45 Forget minutes, Miami. okay? Forget Miami. You, you said everything that's on Del Mabry. What's what's on Del Mabry, Samer? I mean, there's there's UFOs. Um oh. yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah, from from the future but also from the past. But I'm just saying, you know what you get when you have the guys in your building and you've you've tasted that 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 meal and that's bigger that's important to keep your guys and i think that's how teams consistently win and keep you know building their culture because those guys have the culture attached to them they smell like the locker room and that when you guys come in they know what the smell is all of that that goes into it and that's what the bucks are doing that's what came into play with with baker came into play with mike and now latte now that we checked off greenberg told me this in green bay mike baker antoine okay yeah. here we are face antoine face. don't worry yeah. So now we got Worfs waiting on this extension, which will help the Bucks get even more cap relief for this free agency period. And you got Winfield Jr. who's still negotiating. He's on the tag. In your opinion, because you have not talked about this, do you think these two deals now with Mike and Baker are Worfs and uh, Antoine going to be the next ones that we hear from? Actual yeah. deals. Yeah, I, I think they get, they get – I think – we talked about that. They told us this face to face that, you know, if we use the tag as a placeholder, they're going to get the deal done. They were close. There was rumors before they put the tag. They just they couldn't afford to get to this place where they couldn't where they couldn't use the tag. And then he becomes a free agent because it would have been all, all hell would have broke loose. So this is more of a placeholder. But they were close. There was rumors out there from Bleacher Report that they were close to a 20 million dollar, you know, per year deal on Antoine. He's going to get signed and worse. What we were told was basically, here's a check, fill it out, and just send it on back. Yeah, they don't even back. want to talk to him. Oh, exactly. just like, we're going to talk. Just go. fill it out, send it back. Blank he's check. Gonna... Let us know what you yeah. want. Yeah. He's, he's going to he's going to the market. This year. And I think it'll happen this year because if they don't, I, I think so. Penny pulls up. It'll be more money next year if they don't do it this year. But but uh, if they do it now, they can restructure, give him more of the money from his rookie contract, and now they open up more space for this year's uh, draft class, this year's free agency. You know, I, know, I don't think they're going to go big game hunting, as uh, Light said the other day, but they'll go little guy fishing, I think, and they'll go get the guys in the bargain bin. They'll continue to do what they do well, scout the guys, figure out pieces that fit well in a starter or rotational type role, and, and sign those guys to deals that make sense and make them prove it again, I guess. But yeah. I think both of these – Rendax is spot on. It's going to be Winfield, David, and Worfs last. Yeah, but uh, Winfield and Worfs, just talking about them specifically, they are going to reset their positional market. They're just That's just what's going to happen. We've been told that's what's going to happen, and they deservedly so will make that happen. I mean, Winfield, he's going to be the top paid safety when he signs his contract, in my opinion. So what, could it change after a couple of days like it always fucking does? Maybe. I don't know. But the safety market right now is so wide open that – Speaking of which, I think they're going to bring Whitehead back. Yeah, yeah, for cheap because and especially the Baker's Baker's cap number is not that high this year. Mike's cap number is a little low. Uh, I was talking to Pelagic about it. I, I was thinking that that might be because of some potential free agents. But Samer Godwin's cap number is super high this year, so that might have been why they kind of did that with Mike to offset it so they can fit them both. But they do have the space, and I I, I think it's a good thing not for the safeties that are out there, but that there are so many safeties out there. If it was just Whitehead, I'd be like. Like people were saying in the beginning, like, nah, man, he's going to cost too much. I don't know. There's some fucking really good safeties out there. No. Whitehead's value might get, you know, just. The more, the, more guys, oh. the more guys get cut that are, like, very good starters. No <laughs> offense to Whitehead, but there are guys out there know. who are very, very good starters. His value drops, and his negotiating leverage drops, and the Bucks having to get into a bidding war, probably drops. less li- less likely. So now you get a Jordan Whitehead for cheap. I believe he's gotten paid enough because he was cut by the Jets. So, he doesn't have to really come in on a prove it deal, but he can come for relatively cheap. He could probably come for one year and get paid again or move. I mean, right now, bro, you bring Whitehead back and you pair him with fucking Winfield back there, bro. Hey, think oh, about it. Think about oh it, Latte. God. 
You don't have to, you don't, there's no learning curve there. The biggest thing with Ryan Neal was there was a learning curve. And at the end of the learning curve, like at the end of the rainbow, there was no fucking pot of gold. Okay. This guy did not play well. He wasn't going to play well. He actually played better as a linebacker, which made no fucking sense. Right. So real talk. We missed Whitehead. His, he did. His, his, his presence in the box against the run, his, his sure tackling. He was a fucking thumper. I mean, the NFC championship in Green Bay, dude, two, two fumbles. Like he's that dude is different, bro. Yeah. We missed Whitehead. We did. They did. They're going to pick and choose. They're going to bring in little role players like we talked about. Left guard position, I believe, is one that's up for grabs in that scenario. Maybe a backup center. I feel like they're going to continue with Hainsey. I don't know. If that might just be some smoke. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. But linebacker is another spot. Today we heard, like we've been saying for the entire season, Carlton Davis probably going to be traded this offseason. I just have a feeling. He's cost him a little bit more. He's not really playing all the takes, time. Takes two. Takes two to tangle. They're not, they're not going to give get him away. It. Two. Oh, they're not going to give him away. But I feel like if there's anything that's open for shopping, it's that it's that guy. Just because I think they really believe in Zion McCollum and they have the ability to possibly draft a really good player at 26 to be a corner, whether it's you know moving Zion back to number three or how it works out, or maybe they're looking towards the future of Jamel Dean being gone and then it's this guy and McCollum. Who knows? But they're again, they're fluid. That's the thing that makes it so cool. They can do whatever they like get faced with. Whatever that draft pick ends up being, they can take best player available because they always take care of things in free agency. And then they go into the draft thinking, all right, we don't have to force a pick. The only force pick is Kyle Trask, honestly. In the last five freaking years, that's the only force pick, in my opinion. They they just felt like they had to get a young guy in here. I see. Um, where is it? Uh, Dub here brings up a good point. I've heard, I've heard people mention this. Scott Reynolds specifically. That is he, in, he can play safety. So uh, that, that is a possibility. They're going to get a white. They got an in-house solution there. Um, and then we can draft another, or maybe there's an in-house um, nickel corner. And then somebody here brought up, what about Levante David? I, I, I'm not saying they're not worried about Levante. Neither is Samer. They are. They're concerned. They want to bring him back. It is a priority to bring him back, especially considering you're not bringing Devin White back. I think like made that ever so clear at the drafts. Or at the combine when they asked him, he was like, uh, we're focused on some other guys right now. So Devin White's not coming back. So you don't want to start from scratch at middle linebacker uh, next year. Um, you have an answer in house for, you know, for, for Devin White uh, in, oh my God, why am I blanking Sammer? I've been on the podcast for a month and all of a sudden. No, I'm not going to help you on this one. The, the linebacker that stepped in. Oh my God, I can't. Either way. Come on. I can't. It. I can't right now. I can't. I'm, I'm blanking. Both of which weed. Um, but that, they can't afford to lose both. The middle linebacker so i think levante wants to be back there's mutual interest there very very similar to mike evans he'll be back i'm not worried about levante it's by the way it's it's brit um brit. You. KJ, so, KJ, KJ, yeah. Brit. yeah so to your point you, guys. about Izian, i think while he can be a backup safety i think they do like him being the nickel guy because zion's not a nickel guy he just doesn't play it very well so now i think they don't want to move him if they don't have to but you could also draft a cornerback as That's a rookie saying. Who might he, was, be he was undrafted and started. Yeah. I mean, like, holes but guy. Some, they also say that's the hardest position to throw a rookie into. So at the end of the day, I, but they're still fluid. That's my whole point. They're going to be fluid. Um, I like Never Izzy as that, as that guy. I don't want to see him playing safety if it take, puts someone else in that position that's not as good. That's a big deal because they pick on the least common denominator, as we saw in Detroit. How long was uh, Sean Murphy Bunting's deal in, in, in Tennessee? Was I believe he's a free agent now. Oh. Yeah. And he I, plays... He don't plays think, nickel, I right? don't think they're interested, though. He play, they plays nickel, though, right? That, that's what he, that's what he yeah. did pretty well. I don't think yeah. they're interested, though. I know. I mean, yeah. Fair? Yeah. But anyway, um, so we kind of talked a little bit about this last thing. This will be like the last thing we talk about. Baker is signed, but do you think, do you personally think that that means they are going to go in with the thought process that we do not need to draft a quarterback? Or do you think they're going to go in the thought process of, if this guy's here, we fucking sign. We we draft him regardless of Baker. I'll give you my answer. I just want to hear what you think. No, are they no, crossing it off? Are they crossing off that position? Knowing the way Jason in the front office thinks, I don't think they cross off anything, bro. I think it's it's B, it's BPA. Mm-hmm. I think responsibly BPA, right? Because I, whether you love him or you hate him, we were one game away from the NFC Championship, two games away from the Super Bowl. Love him or hate him, I, I I don't know what to tell you. So obviously they they want to lean with an eye to the you know one, one eye on the future but one on the, eye on the present and you know fortifying the, the the offensive line possibly another receiver but that that's a future deal uh, a pass rusher all those options are on the table but if somebody slides 
I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know if Jason would pass. I mean, do you? What? What is your? What are your, what are your thoughts? I think the only guy that they would consider, and that's if he slides into the McCarthy. second round, would be Penix. I really think that would be the only guy. I, I don't. I, I think they really like McCarthy, but I don't think he'll be there no matter. I what. I think He's they like McCarthy. That. I will tell you, they like McCarthy. They like and, McCarthy, but. I didn't want to say I know, okay? When you will, you said it. He will not be there, okay? He will not be there. He will not be there. People are going to be shocked. They're going to call me a fucking idiot, but he might be a top, top He might be a top five pick, honestly. It might end up being pick top five. So look out. I mean, I'd hate to see Sean Payton with another guy like that because I do think he would fit really well. He's got a really good processor in my mind. So with that being said, I think if there's one guy that they possibly draft quarterback wise, I think they do cross it off, by the way. I think they're crossing it off. But if Penix is sitting there at in the second round at 58 or 51 and they can trade back up and grab him, maybe like, hey, you don't have to rush. We're going to bring you along slowly. We're going to give you the Jordan Love treatment. And if it doesn't work out, you know what? It didn't work out. But I think they, that's a really good backup plan because if Baker, you know, you say, hey, we're going to just move on. Like, think about it. The Chiefs had an AFC championship under Alex Smith. They were in the AFC Championship game. They still drafted Patrick Mahomes, and they told Alex Smith to kick rocks. So at the end of the day, that could play out here if that happens that way too, if they draft a guy like Penix, in my opinion. But, again, it doesn't force them to play him. And if he's there in the second round, that would be the guy. But in my mind, I think they've crossed that off the list, and they're going to go best player available and try to build all the other parts of this team. Next year, though, even if Baker has a good year next year, I think they absolutely will draft a quarterback. The problem is if one, if one slides, man, <laughs> there's a panic in the second round there. It'd be mighty hard to pass on that. But I, I get what you're saying. That's I what think I said. That's one, the I, guy who would slide, though. That's what I'm saying. Well, and he has a lot of injuries and stuff. And as much yeah. as I, I like him, I like him a lot. And he does. Somebody put there. He has a candy. He's got an absolute fucking hose. But he's also well, what? What? <laughs> you were in. You were in that room with him at, at the combine. <laughs> you know Holy what I meant? Shit. Bro. No, he, he's got. He's, he's got, got a third a, leg. You're telling me he's got. That's why leg. he was able to deal with all the knee injuries. He was pretty much literally a fucking tripod. He just tripods himself. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Okay. I hate these knees. Don't hurt, dude. I got a whole nother leg holding me up, dude. I don't need crutches. <laughs> he, he, went, he went into. The, I just need one crutch. What? Yeah, he had. He has an oh, absolute cannon, bro. He has a lot of injuries, lots of injuries, and he's also one of the oldest quarterbacks coming in this draft. I think he's like. 22 or 20, 23, something like that. He's, he's a dog. Older. He's a dog. He's, he's a dog. dog. And he fought. A lot of people were turned off by, by the national championship. I, I thought they couldn't really protect him too well. And he stood in there in, in the face of that pressure and got fucking beat up and just continued to get up and sling it to the best but, of them. So He played a bad game. Like, you can't tell me Brett Favre didn't play a bad game. Uh, Brock Purdy's played a bad game. I saw, I saw Tom play a lot of bad games in person. Lamar Jackson just won an MVP. Mar Jackson played in some bad games. I believe bad he had game. a bad game his last game he played. So, uh, like you got sometimes you just have some bad games. I don't think these. I don't think NFL scouts are like fans where they look at the bad games and say this is a terrible game. They look at the bad game and see what they learn from the player about him in that bad game. Did he curl up and fucking quit? Did he go out there and keep fighting? Did he continue to still try to do things to keep his team in the game? Did he continue to try to carry them and put them on his back? Or did he kind of just say, fuck it, I'm not going to I'm not gonna get protected. I'm just going to throw the ball out of bounds every time. Tells, tells a lot, right? Latte about you when you're in, in that moment, right? In that moment where you're fighting adversity, you're not winning, not, nothing's going your way. That's the best yeah. film, in my opinion. Because it's easy to chop up a bunch of film with guys wide open like Kyle Trask throwing the dudes that are just running <laughs> wide open. That's not hard to hit an open guy. Show me a dude who's just got, got to hit guys who aren't open while he's under duress. That's that's tape that matters. So, you know, I still think Penix has he has a pretty good ceiling, in my opinion. So if he sli- MK, if anyone slides, it's going to be him. MK is about to get blocked. He says, sign Vernon Hargraves. Sir, what? Or what? What? What the fuck are you talking he's about? He's not even no. in the league anymore, is he? I thought he was a model yeah. now. He's in Houston. I don't know what the hell he's doing. And then somebody here said... Uh, Jose Velasco said, watch him from Japan. Just found out we signed Baker for a steal. Jose, shout out to you for watching from Japan, bro. I never do this. That's but dope. drop in the chat where you're, where you're watching from or listening from. That'd be pretty dope to see where everybody's at, man. We got 193 people in here. We need to take the loose cannons to a live. We need uh, no, to do a live loose cannons in Japan. In Japan. We should do a live loose cannons in Japan. But I'm, I'm a little offended here. There's 193 people in here. Only 11 likes. Oh, 11 yeah. likes. We've been so deep in this conversation, I have not mentioned. Oh, if you are new, hit that subscribe button. And if you have been here, make sure you hit the like button right now. Don't even fucking wait. We deserve the like button right now. Because if you have not noticed, Latte and the Godfather Sam Raleigh here together, this is a much better conversation than anything Stank and oh, I have had to do. Like, uh, think about this. My back, you you know, like my back has been sore, Latte. I've been doing a lot of carrying. Doing a lot, a lot of lifting on this show. Sorry, I'm back. The, the, no. he, not all heroes were a case, but I'm back, Sam. I'm back to help you. I, I, I'm sorry that the negotiation got tough there. 
but I had to show you the value that I bring to the table. And you saw what it was like without me here. And that, that's hey. shitty. It's a one, one way conversation. Hey, I say it all the time. A good deal is one where both sides have to lose a little bit. It hurts, it hurts on both sides. I lost man. a little bit. You lost a little bit. I didn't give in to what you were demanding. But yes, I will answer one person's question here, though. Yes, you did. Earlier. Okay. Yes, the deal and the contract that we struck between the Loose Cannons and Poppy Latte includes in the season the return of Cup of Latte. There is no, that, that was a requirement and a guarantee in the contract, in the writing. There will be Cup of Latte next season. There will also be some food videos where I show you guys how to make my meat, marinate it, grill it, execute You're going to put your meat on camera? I'm going to put my meat on camera. Maybe with some Bucks players. Hmm. I'm going to show some Bucks players how to make my meat. Oh, Meat pick. You're going to send us all meat picks? Meat picks, sir. Oh, yeah, dude. I love meat. By the way. An unannounced, unexpected I love meat pick. I love the fact that you guys are just pounding that like that. I love it. Hell yeah. I have a goal, guys. It is absolutely sad to me. It saddens my heart. That we're not at 5,000 subs. Makes oh, no, no sense. Unbelievable. So if, if you're not subscribed, 190 of you here, subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It just lets you know when we're going on and you can watch these shenanigans and enjoy it with us. So subscribe. Share the show with your friends. Anybody who knows a Bucks fan, we're trying to grow this. You know what I'm saying? It, like, four, like no, not even 5,000. That makes no sense. Look at this content. <laughs> look how beautiful says, you look. Thank God I'm not a vegetarian anymore. I'm proud of you, Greg DeCruz. You point you you post a lot of shit about being a vegetarian, and you've you've come back over to the dark side, the cow eating side, the medium rare side, the side. Yeah, no offense, but that's where the real men live, man. I'm just saying. Uh, uh, let me see here. I was confused why he wasn't here. Glad you're back, fam. Yeah, Don. Listen, we had we had some we had we had our own free agency thing going on here. We had our own unrestricted free agency drama. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Part of the deal, actually, is that we had to give a pay cut to Stank. <laughs> so, <laughs> he definitely won't be affording shoes anytime soon. I will say that much. Um, Westside Sports is Tampa. I don't know if I missed any of those super chats. I've not been paying attention here. Sorry. All right, Latte. I'm going to let you uh, predict what the next big news story is going to be from the Bucks. Now that we've gotten two this week. I mean, what, what's the next one? Are we getting Antoine? Not playing on franchise tag, or are we getting Tristan Wirth's extension? And oh yeah, before I forget, you touched on Levante David. I didn't even respond to that shit. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about Levante. Levante's that guy where they're like, he's like, hey, listen, I'll let you guys know in April. Okay, I'll let you know. Let me just do my thing. Let me digest this. Let me get back in, the, you know, the massage parlor. Let me get back in my sauna. Let me get my, you know, let me get back to being feeling like a human again. And he'll be signed. And I think he has no reason not to play again because he played phenomenally last year. You saw that latte. So um, yeah. I don't think he's going to retire after playing that damn well, knowing, hey, they brought the fucking band back, right? So why not go out there and play the fucking tambourine and do what I'm doing and fucking get us back to the promised land? So I think he's back. Not worried about it. I don't think the Bucks are worried about it. They know they can strike a deal for one year at whatever the fucking number he wants because they are our savants and they are big brains in that fucking building at one book. Hey, somebody said here, I can't find it. So do you, we should trade Stank for a dozen wings. Too much. Dude, nobody's paying no that. No giving up two, two, a dozen <laughs> wings for that? Guy. A dozen wings? Nobody's, nobody's paying that, bro. Yeah. Nobody's right. paying that. And then, uh, oh, my God. You said what I think hap happens next. I think the, the stupid fucking kicker, the one that we don't name, McLovin, whatever his name is. I think Damn. that happens. Low key. That's a low key signing. Very important. Very important. We won some games because of that guy. I, I think that's the next one. The only, the only thing I didn't like about the Antoine Winfield getting the tag move was because I really thought if they could nail that deal, they could take that tag and just throw it on that dumb kicker and be like, fuck you, man. Oh, that would be dope. That would have been, been such a huge fuck you. And it have been such a fuck you to the rest of the NFL. Like, dude, we had all these free agents. We signed all of them, and we were just like flicked that fucking dime, basically, or a nickel of a franchise tag at our goddamn kicker, who nobody in this building even knows his name. I bet you nobody in there even knows what he looks like. That's how hmm. little they discuss and talk. And he doesn't have a locker, bro. His lo It's like a closet in a hallway somewhere. They're like, go, just go over there, bro. He go, pops go out of the car, puts on his cleats, and jogs onto the warm-up deal. No one knows where he's at pregame. I don't even know what he looks like. If he took off his helmet, I would have no idea who that guy is. I don't even know what number our kicker wears. Is he Mike? Tom is he wearing the five for Houston? No, that's that's my boy. That's that, that's Camarda. Now Tom says six wings and a coupon for six wings, for a six wing discount. No, no, that's no. free. That's six free wings basically. Yeah, that's still too much. They're losing. That's a terrible. That's a terrible trade for them. You know when you go to the mall and you get the little you get the little sample from the restaurants. That's oh, yeah. what you just think. Oh, that's yeah. it. That, the, that the little Chinese. Little yeah, how, come, spot. how come Chinese food in its entirety never tastes as good as those little samples? I don't know. 
It's 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 they trap you, man. They bring you in. They lure they you in. They taste better. They taste better off that little sample tray. Better. Yeah, and you know what? Like they always have the hottest people serving those things out of those trays. They're just ridiculous, dude. It's it's like, why aren't you at the counter? Why aren't you at the counter? And why does this taste so good off this toothpick? It tastes so much better off this toothpick than that plastic fork that breaks once I stab it into the chicken. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, So I think that's my next big deal. Um, I did not get to address because we were still in the middle of signing our our contract and stuff. But I do want to say it's not a secret. Um, Everyone knows that who knows me personally or has seen any minute of the show. Uh, Mike Evans... To me and my family, the things that he's done for my son, uh, who he is my son's uh, favorite player while my son was in the hospital without having to do it. Uh, the behind the scenes stuff that he does and just what he means to the team, what he means to the community. Uh, absolutely ecstatic through through the through the over the moon ecstatic that Mike is back. Um, all the shit that people talk that he wants to get paid 30 plus million dollars. He wants to go play in ring chase, all that bullshit. And at the end of the day, he's back for under 21 million. Like, I mean, without incentives, with incentives, which he's probably going to hit, it'll be more. But Mike is just rare, rare, rare air human being, player, especially at that position. Um, Samra and I I'll never forget those roundtable talks with with Bruce and, and other people from, you know, with the organization where it's like, you don't see stuff like this, guys. You don't you don't understand how lucky we are to have guys like Godwin and guys like Chris who are so selfless. Guys at that position, even the nicest ones, at the end of the day, they they they're driven by ego. They are big dick energy guys. They want the fucking ball, and they're gonna let you know it. You don't really see thirteen and fourteen doing stuff like that. So we are beyond blessed to have guys like that. I am beyond blessed as a fan, and you guys as well. That hopefully we get to see Mike finish his career out here. It's rare; it doesn't happen often. Jerry Rice didn't even get to do it. So I just wanted to address that. I'm ecstatic. I'm so fucking happy. What a relief on that Friday morning to see Mike, you know, sign that extension. So just wanted to add that because I didn't get to address it. I believe it was, was, Monday, it? Monday, it was Monday, Thursday morning. It was Monday morning. Whatever the hell it was, dude. I don't remember. It was, Either yeah. Way. It was Victory Monday. Hey, listen, as I mentioned earlier, make sure you guys hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. And click the pinned link in the chat. That is for the GoFundMe where we're trying to raise $20,000 for the Arians Family Foundation. Every $10 Donation is a raffle ticket to a $250 entry or a $20 raffle is equal to a $1,000 entry into the Jason Aldean Arians Family Foundation Benefit Concert. It's going to be a blast. All the information is on the GoFundMe page. Check out all the information on our Twitter accounts for the flyer and everything like that. And we will see you guys hopefully later on this week. We'll talk some more draft. Guys, I can't stress enough how fucking cool it is. To have drinks with with with, with Bruce and, and Co. Okay, yeah. I'll give you a quick story. I'm sorry, Samer, my last one. I haven't been in the pod in a month, and Samer knows this shit. Like the first time we met Bruce in person was after the Super Bowl, COVID year, obviously. And Samer, I, Samer, Stank, and I get a nudge, and we're like, we just get slipped an address. Go here after the gala. <laughs> we're like, what the fuck? Like, all right, whatever. Pull up chilling i'm at the bar order a drink with my wife all of a sudden here comes jason light here comes green here comes the entire front off here comes bruce bruce walks directly up to me guys i had lost like 40 pounds sam remembers this i wasn't drinking i was i was eating very clean i was being very behaved and bruce is like poppy what you drinking baby very smooth just bruce Arians like what you drinking baby i said bruce i'm, I'm not drinking coach i'm i'm on a diet i'm trying to watch you know i'm trying to lose some weight coach and he looked me dead in my eye like a coach would in the locker room. He said, bull shit. You're with me tonight. What are you drinking? I said, I coach, I don't have a choice. Okay. But I'm drinking what you're drinking, bro. And the stories that we heard and the, the conversations and just the shenanigans and getting to talk about draft and players and what was going through your mind, Jason, it's fucking unreal. So if you get a chance, whether you like Jason Aldean or not, it's for an incredible cause for Voices for Children and costs and stuff like that. Bruce's Foundation. Ten bucks, guys. Get you in the door. Twenty. Get you the fucking VIP experience. We're going to raffle it off live here on the show. I can't express enough how grateful we are to those that have donated. And if you can donate, that'd be amazing. Even if you don't do the ten or twenty. You can donate five bucks, a dollar. doesn't matter. Donate whatever you yeah. can. Just the ten and the twenty get you the raffle ticket. 
do whatever you can. It's for the kids, guys. Seriously. Yep. Um, great, and stuff great, they do. great stuff they do. Awesome fun. And of course, like Latte said, if we choose you and you end up getting picked, your raffle, you know, you win the the, the, the raffle. You're going golf to tournament. the fucking golf tournament with us, which is even cooler because it's an all day event, meeting tons of different people. Guys like Chuck Pagano, guys like Tom Moore. I mean, all these guys from across the NFL. Baker's probably going to be golfing there. Mike has been every single time. You're going to meet the Loose Cannons golf team that we're going to have there as well, competing. By the way, uh, we're going to be defending our championship. So it's a fucking blast. You guys have seen the videos. You guys know what we're about and what they're about. And we appreciate everybody who helps us. So as always, we'll see you guys later this week. Hit the like button on the way out. And fuck you, stay and go Bucks. Let's fucking bake. Yeah. Welcome to Tampa Bay. We fuck them up when we raise the flag.